Good morning, my name is Oscar Mendes, and I would like to say welcome back to Favaloro Foundation University Hospital. So he is a 78 years old male presented with bilateral common iliac aneurysm. Actually, he suffered from hypertension and dyslipidemia, and he also suffered from many years from symptomatic renal lithiasis. So he has a normal ACG, normal uh, blood test, and the echo doppel also showed a preserved left ventricular ejection fraction with some hypertrophy. The stress echo didn't show any ischemia. The CT scan uh, that uh, he showed to me on the first uh, visit here at Fowler Foundation. As you can observe there, in this ancient CT reconstruction, uh, both uh, common iliac arteries has, uh, have an, a significant aneurysm. At the beginning, he, I thought it was an easy case for uh, bilateral stenting. Here we can observe near the bifurcation, there is a very, uh, I mean, proximal di dilatation with uh, some thrombus uh, containing on this aneurysm and then the distal end of the common iliac artery on the right side of the panel, which is about uh, 13 or 14 for both uh, sides. So uh, at the end is uh, uh, both uh, bilateral aneurysm. The, the left side is the biggest with the 35 millimeters. The right side is uh, 26 or something like this and a little bit more uh, complicated according with this imaging. And also in this uh, image, what I am trying to show you that the proximal landing zone is not so long. And that's why we consider it was not adequate for my first thought, which was to implant uh, bilateral uh, cover stenting. So this is the 3D reconstruction, the, the abdominal, infrarenal abdominal aorta, uh, showing that infrarenal diameters are uh, not too big, 18 millimeters, and the distal uh, at, at the level of the bifurcation is 16, with the length of 9.7, 9.5 centimeters. Uh, this is the right, uh, common iliac artery showing this uh, complicated uh, aneurysm with a length of uh, 7.9 centimeters until the bifurcation with the uh, internal iliac artery and the maximum diameter of 25 millimeters. The landing zone uh, distally is uh, 14 millimeters in diameter. And this is the left uh, iliac artery with a common length of uh, 6.5 centimeters with a maximum diameter of uh, 35 at the level of aneurysm with a distal landing zone of 13 millimeters. So this is our plan. We have a, per a bilateral percutaneous access uh, with a surgical standby as always to use an ultra low profile device, especially because the distal uh, aorta near the, the carrefour, uh, near the bifurcation is only uh, 16 millimeters. So probably it's not too big uh, to, as, to accept or not compressing a bilateral iliac uh, from the regular devices that we are using. Next. So that's why we have decided to use this ultra low profile device. This is the configuration. This is the proximal uh, part of the device for proximal sealing with the stand closely uh, positioning with the laser, laser cut uh, crowns and hooks for proximal fixation. Probably here, is not too much important because uh, we don't have problem with the with the proximal uh, part with the proximal next of an abdominal aneurysm. The diameters 14 for the, for the for the main body. With this uh, device that I'm gonna show you is an inline sheath that we can use then to introduce the homolateral uh, iliac uh, branch. This is uh, the main body configuration, 45 millimeter for the main body. Then the two uh, limbs, uh, the, the, the right or the homolateral side is uh, 55, so it's going to be uh, 11, 10 uh, millimeters from the homolateral side and about uh, 80 from the contralateral side. So we have enough space in this abdominal aorta, which uh, length is uh, 10 centimeters. So this is the markers that we have to observe and the proximal part, this mark should be uh, below the, the, the inferior border of the renal ostium. And then we have this uh, seven shape uh, marker at the level of the bifurcation that it should be like a capital I uh, to be sure that it's uh, 
uh, exactly in the in the opposite side of uh, the introduction of the main body. So we have a bilateral puncture. So we have done a six French uh, bilateral puncture. We uh, pre-close with one proglide here, which is going to be a 12 French uh, device, and two proglides here, which is going to be 14 French. We have not put any protection uh, wire below, as we show it, uh, in the previous case that we did uh, one or two weeks uh, before, because we consider this a, a normal artery, not too big holes, and it's probably easy to fix with this uh, proglides, and then if we have to uh, hold the groin for some minutes, it's gonna be uh, okay. This is the angiography, which is almost the same that the angiography you are observing. You can observe, they are the CT scan on the right side of the panel, uh, the angiography. So after that, we have uh, left uh, a stiff wire from our right side, and now we are introducing a uh, right uh, shatkin to have a marker for the left uh, renal artery. Here you can observe the device. Uh, the device uh, also has an inline sheath that we are going to disengage when we complete the delivery of the device. This is the, the, the delivery system. So this is the security mark that's going to be moved forward. And then I can start rotating to deliver it very slowly, the device. And when we are finished, we have to uh, disengage the proximal uh, hooks of the device for the proximal fixation. And I, I also had to retrieve this. Uh, Fabiana is going to remember us all the steps. I'm going to retrieve this 11 French sheath. And then we can proceed with the introduction of the device. Here, we have to check two things. First, the proximal landing zone, uh, according to the CT that you are observing in the left uh, bottom panel, uh, it is okay. Then we have to orientate the, by rotating the device here in this uh, eye configuration, I will show you with a marker so you can realize what I am talking about. This is the marker, which is an, an eye configuration. It means that both branches are exactly side by side in this uh, configuration. And then I also have to check uh, distal uh, for the contralateral uh, limb, which is okay, is above the bifurcation, is something that we are observing on the CT scan panel and that you are observing below my hands. So at the end, here is, I think it's a good position. Now I am moving the security to, to the proximal part of the device, and then I, I start rotating. The, so I am trying not to lose the orientation. Probably, Gustavo, you can make a check. We are a little low, but remember that the we have a very proximal good, uh, part is absolutely normal. The device rotate a little bit. I counterclockwise rotation. I am doing test, Gustavo. Perfect. So the orientation is perfect now. So now we have. The contralateral stamp is released. Yes. Now oh, it's okay. Okay. And now I'm gonna counterclock this part that sometimes it's important to make a little harder. And then as you observe, the proximal hook were released exactly in the position we want, we want it, which is below the left uh, renal artery. So it's okay. The wire, we use hydrophilic wire. Uh, so uh, this is the first risk step where the inability to open both uh, iliac branches. Absolutely. You see that here we are out. Probably we can go near. Yes. Yeah, it's, now we it, are in. Mid, minimally rotate a bit uh, anterior would be yeah exactly and now uh, so we can do something for those who are not familiar with these maneuvers so if you are in doubt about this 
you can rotate the catheter, the catheter inside the device. And if it is rotating freely, like here, you are absolutely sure you are inside. Then you can do an arch. Uh, we might introduce the marked uh, pigtail. And then we can do an angio. Please mapping, row mapping. So we have a very nice imaging. So we have the pigtail there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. So we are going to use a hundred, hundred centimeter length uh, device or 100 or 120. I would say 120. Okay. As I told you, it's an uh, ultra low profile device uh, with this uh, hydrophilic coating sheath. It's a, a very uh, good device uh, for uh, calcified arteries, for a small uh, external iliac arteries. Uh, we have an uh, acceptable experience. I have to tell you that this is a not more common device that we are using because it was introduced in the market uh, very recently. But for these special cases, we can use. Uh, it's very precise for the de deployment. I, uh, not very, I mean, radio pack. So you have to have a good imaging or if the patient is too, I mean, I would say too big, let's see in this way, sometimes the, the, the vision of the device is not uh, too precise. This is the marker of the distal landing zone. So I have to be sure that I am not closing the hypogastric artery. And then I have to overlap here the markers. This marker should be above this, this, the, this marker between this and this. And the other one is co in a coincidence with the distal uh, part. The delivery system is exactly the same. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are a little bit down. So, but uh, now we are closing the hypogastric, but we can push. So we can shorten the device okay. while delivering. So let's start here. I will try not to go over the R marker. Meanwhile, we can uh, comment uh, as the case yes. days before that there's a lot of experience with this uh, device over the world. And uh, the last uh, published were in the Journal of Vascular Therapy with 42 patients with very good results, very good clinical success and low incidence of uh, endolic. So the device is open approximately. And now while Gustavo is gonna rotate here, I'm gonna push a little bit to keep the device exactly above the bifurcation of the hypogastric. Okay, perfect. Got to disengage here. I'm gonna advance the device a little bit. And yeah, and we can pull everything out. Okay, so Gustavo is gonna push the wire, please. So we are going to balloon in here. So remember that this inflation are manual. You have to have a sensation and the, uh, I mean, rectangular configuration of the balloon to be sure that the inflation is okay. So now I'm gonna introduce all together using the balloon as the, Yes, now I'm gonna dilate here. Now let's go proximal. So here is the connection. You can observe that we have a good space for the homolateral branch and a good space for the contralateral. Okay, please don't kill. Okay. So anyway, here we don't need too much because remember that it's not an abdominal aortic aneurysm, it's iliac aneurysm, okay? So, okay. The sheath is a, it's a very good sheath, but it's a little bit weak. So you have to take care of that during advancing or, or retrieving, especially the big balloon, which uh, should be this balloon 
Remember that the Coda balloon is not going through on this small 12 French sheet. This is the name of this balloon is Reliant. Okay, it's perfect. I am delivering the homolateral the homolateral branch. branch. Exactly. Okay. Now we have to disengage here. Perfect. So Joaquin is going to hold the sheet and we can pull everything out. Paying attention that is coming freely. Let me see. Hold on a little bit. Now, okay. So here, once again, we can put the mapping for checking the distance. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, seven. So we have to introduce this. You have we, to engage. Yeah, you have to hear a clock like now and now it's perfect and now i have to advance everything together here is the distant landing zone near the where we have the mark for the the ostium of the hypogastric artery and then i start rotating so keeping my vision on the proximal and distal landing zone both So here we don't have to push or pull because the length of the device is perfect for this uh, situation. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, yes, this is it's, a, it's, an, know, uh, it's a, an elderly patient with uh, some cardiovascular risk factors. Okay. So is, I'm moving and Gustavo is inflating. So this is the proximal connection, it's okay. Let me move a little bit here. So once again, I, I, I can see enough space for the contralateral side. This is important because if one of the sides, side branches are collapses, you might have an acute or late uh, thrombosis. Expected outcome. Wonderful. So we have, we have a perfect uh, proximal landing zone, it was expected. Distant landing zone is perfect. Then the question is if we should dilate with mm -hmm. the uh, kissing balloon like uh, eight millimeters, remembering that the distal landing uh, aorta was 16. I think so. I think that we uh, it will be uh, referred to, to you post delayed. Uh, yeah, here at the bifurcation. The bifurcation, yes. Because we the left complete, side is a little bit compressed. So yes. let's go with the two balloons. We have already prepared. Let me, uh, Gustavo can receive the balloon and you yes. help me with the wire. I think yeah, that we, we can decrease the risk of uh, yeah, branch thrombosis. Yes, absolutely. So this is the reason. Or here, Otro you can observe why we have chosen this device and not the others. So Joaquin pulling the catheter. Uh, so we are we have uh, ten remaining minutes. Yes. So we can introduce regular balloons so we can have a perfect control of the pressure. They are non-compliant or minimamente or minimally compliant. So to be sure we are not over dilating. More contrast. Although yeah. we, are, we have protected because we have a stain graph there. So Gustavo is gonna connect. Take your time because we are on yeah, time. time. Yes. We are we are going to do this. I think. Well, we can do a final answer and then we can uh, retrieve everything and to close. Let's inflate eight. Okay, zoom there. Perfect. You can observe there yeah. the indentation on the, on the balloons. 10, 12. 10, 12. 12. Okay. 14. Yes. Okay, perfect. That's it. So now we are yeah, going to use the amplifier. 
Okay, it's holding the groin. We are going to introduce a six French sheath. So in these cases, we follow up the patient with a CT scans, uh, three, six Best the first thing. year, then one per year, and give to all, all these kind of patients Absolutely. aspirin and clopidogrel. You can observe that it's completely sealed. Thank you. Thank you.